Welcome back to Great Outdoor Solar, located in Central Florida. We specialize in doing RV solar. So we do solar for mobile applications only. We've done a ton of RVs. I've been doing RV solar since 2017, and I also lived and traveled full time for three years off grid. So my experience building solar systems comes from my actual experience living off grid and then designing systems and doing builds since 2017. Now, this is a 2023 Grand Design Momentum triple axle fifth wheel. This is a 410TH. So this is a big toy hauler and we did a big solar system on this. The solar is, system is definitely larger than most people are ever gonna need, but this client, this was their last RV um, that they finally bought for themselves and they really just wanted to go all out. So I made some recommendations and then they said, no, let's go create even more crazy. And so that's a system that we have today. Let's start up here in the front bay area. Actually, you know what? Let me show you what it had first. Originally from the factory, here's the factory components we pulled out. So it had a WIFCO 2000 watt inverter and then the panel inside to control it. It had a lithium converter already from the factory, so that's pretty cool. And then it had a 50 amp MPPT Future Solutions charge controller because it had 660 watts of solar on the roof. So from the factory, it's not too bad. 2000 watt inverter, 660 watts. Not too bad for two people to do some dry camping in. Really, you need about 800 to 1000 watts for two people, but pretty good for uh, you know coming from the factory this way. Now, this inverter only powered a small sub panel. So what that means is it ran a couple of out, it ran like the outlets. We have definitely changed that. But I thought this was cool because if you just want to do lithium battery upgrades, it came with the converter. So if you just wanted lithiums, you could easily do that with this rig from the factory by just changing out your batteries. And yes, I know that we're an RV solar builder and we have packages around our website with flat rate pricing, but we also do custom systems as well. So we do smaller systems for vans all the time. Um, we do just battery upgrades for like just going to lithiums. Let's jump up front and up here, you can see that we fit six of our 206 amp hour SLK heated lithium batteries. So this is 1236 amp hours at 12 volt. So pretty big lithium battery bank. Actually, it's one of the, one of the largest ones we've done. Um, we've done a couple of this size, but this is a huge battery bank. Paired with that, we have two multi plus two, two times 120. So what that means is there's two inverters in here. They're both 12 3000s. They can actually both put out 2,400 watts or 20 amps at 120 volts continuously. So that means that with two inverters set up in parallel, when they're out dry camping, they have 4,800 watts or 40 amps of inverting power that can come out of these batteries. And then of course, when they have shore power, these can assist. So they're on a smaller circuit, they can assist. Or um, you know, if they're on shore power, then the power passes through this, the full 50 amp passes through and then inside you have a full 50 amp service. This size system would power a mini split. If they took out two air conditioners and put in a 24,000 BTU dual head mini split, this system would keep up with the mini split. So it will keep up with air conditioning 24 seven on a mini split, but not on the rooftop ACs. They just eat too much power. And there's not any type of system that can keep up with a rooftop air conditioner uh, 24 seven, because the bigger the RV gets, the more air conditioners you need. And you just can't, there's not enough roof space to collect enough power during the short window you have solar to both run the air conditioning during the day when you need it and recharge the ba the battery bank that you were draining the last 19 hours because there wasn't enough solar to keep up with the air conditioning. So, but flat out in the sun, this thing has 3000 watts of solar on the roof, just a little over 3000 watts. So yeah, sitting in the sunshine, they can literally power the air conditioner during the day and it won't even drop their battery bank. And then they can run their air conditioning for a long time off these batteries. But the next day, they would need to supplement, either turn off the air conditioner and let the solar recharge the batteries back up or run a generator or something like that. So that's why I say that you don't really need this big of a system because um, if you're following the weather, this is gonna be way more than enough uh, to keep up. This client just really wanted to go all out and you know, they added extra stuff to the, to the package, which we're more than happy to install for them. But besides the two inverters, we have our breakers before and after the inverters. This is where we do our combining of our power from the inverters, uh, going from the shore power and then to the breaker box. We have our servo, because of course inside we have a touch screen that you can control everything from. And then if you connect this to Wi-Fi, you can actually remotely control the system as well. It turned out really good. Even though it's a huge system, you can see there is still some room here up in the bay. Okay, it is over 100 degrees up here, so I'm gonna make this quick. 
This RV already came with 660 watts of solar on the roof. So it had two 330 watt panels from the factory at Grand Design. And then we added 2,400 additional watts. So it now has 3,060 watts total. Uh, you can see you can come up the ladder and you still got plenty of space to get up here. And then you can walk all the way down and then all the way down the middle of the RV. We probably could have fit one more um, over this hot spot area, but we didn't want to cover that up in case the client wants to, you know, add one of those later. And the panels go all the way up to the tip. This RV is so big it didn't quite fit underneath our bay. So we added 12 200 watt panels to the existing 660 watts to give it a little over 3,000 watts total on the roof of this RV. Now, before we go inside, I just want to point out that this is our shore power source. It's only a 20 amp plug. We just have a little extension cord going to the other side. And I just wanted to show you that this is a Grand Design Momentum 410TH. So, if we go inside, this is a brand new RV. I may have even used it yet. The chairs are still up there and stuff still wrapped in plastic. I just wanted to point out real quick, I've had some people ask like what kind of RVs have we worked on? And the answer is a lot. I don't think we've worked on every brand because there's just so many, but we have worked on even some crazy like off ones. Like we've done Northern Light truck campers. We've done the host truck camper, the host mammoth. Um, we've done a Lance truck camper. We've done a born free class C. I don't think they make those anymore. Um, we've done, let's see, I had a lazy days class C myself that I did. Um, let's see, we've done some Thor class C's. We've done some Winnebago class C's, both just like traditional class C's and more like the B plus styles. Um, as far as class A's go, I've done Tiffin. I've actually had people bring a brand new Tiffin directly from Red Bay to here for me to do. I've done several Tiffins. I've done some Allegro buses. And then as far as B's go, like a class B or a van, I've done actual van build outs that someone built themselves. And we've also done um, vans like we've done the, a Solaris Pocket. We've done um, several Airstream interstate vans. Um, and then speaking of like B pluses, we've done leisure travel vans. I had an Itasca Vivo myself prior before the lazy days. So I've done a couple of B pluses and class C's, I've done class A's. And as far as tollables go, tons of different fifth wheels, lots of grand designs, obviously just like this one. We've done Alliance, we've done Brinkley, We've done some Cedar Creek. We've done some Forest River products. And then like the regular towables, like a bumper pool. We've done large travel trailers and we've done small travel trailers. Like by small, I mean like kind of like the R pod style. Um, we've even done a cargo trailer in ATC, all aluminum, like cargo trailer build out um, that a customer had already put their electrical system in. So essentially we specialize in RV solar and that is all we do. You bring in your RV typically on a Monday and you pick it up on a Friday and we do your whole system in that week is how it normally works. It has to be mobile and it has to come to our shop here in central Florida. We're not a mobile tech or an actual shop and you come to us and we do all the work and we basically schedule clients in advance because um, we don't have RVs just sitting around here waiting to get done. We book what we can actually get done. So we only do mobile applications. So like a horse trailer, cargo trailer, uh, travel trailer, fifth wheel, motorhome, basically anything that's mobile. Um, we've even done a tour bus like for a band, which was pretty cool. That was like a big bus. Um, so if it's mobile applications, we can do it. We don't do houses or structures or anything like that. So the licensing and insurance and everything is for mobile applications. We mainly work on RVs. So I just wanted to throw that out there because some people were asking about that. So back to this RV, here is the, the door when you come in, this is the middle door, right before you go up into the bathroom and the bedroom. And this is where their factory control panel was. You can see we got the air conditioner on and then they can control their lighting from here as well. So we just have like the kitchen light on right now. And this is the unit we added. This is the servo, I'm sorry, this is the Touch 50 GX. So this is a five inch. We also offer a seven inch display. Uh, this customer wanted to go with the five inch display. This is what comes with our packages. So you can see on our, our 20 amp circuit that we're plugged into out there, we are pulling 1800 watts from shore or just under, and we're using 1400 watts for the air conditioner and the Inverter is absor in absorption mode, so it's charging the batteries. You can kind of follow the ants and then go into the batteries. So even though we're running an air conditioner on a 20 amp circuit, we're still charging our batteries back up, which is pretty cool, even though they're, they're getting pretty close to full. And then DC power is things like our lights. 
and then the PV charger is solar. We don't have any solar coming in because we're underneath this awning and we have all of our solar breakers turned off. But this DC power is all of your 12 volt stuff. So if I go down here into the lighting and let's say I turn on some more lights here, we'll see this number jump up. See how it's gone up. So if I turn these lights back off, we'll see that number go back down. So that's all the lighting and stuff like that is what the DC power is. So on shore power, we're still running everything. And then you can control everything from this screen right here. So we have our current limit set to 19 right now, which is as low as it will go with a, a you know a dual uh, parallel setup like this so for the inverters. We have our inverter you know on. We can turn it to charger only, inverter only, and off. But we're going to leave it on on because I want to demonstrate some cool stuff here. So I'm going to come down here to HVAC control. We currently have the main air conditioner going. I'm going to go up here to the bedroom and turn on the bedroom air conditioner. And we should be able to watch it go into, look at that, already into assisting mode. So now it's pulling power out of the batteries to run that second air conditioner. So we're still pulling 1700 watts from shore because we have a 20 amp plug, but then the solar or the batteries is providing the rest to run the second air conditioner. So the actual inverter is now in assisting mode. So the inverter is only supplying about half of it because some of it's gone from the shore. Pretty cool. And we have two air conditioners going. Now check this out. I'll walk over here. I'm going to turn on this microwave. Microwave going and two air conditioners. Look at that. Now we got almost 4,000 watts going on. We still have 17 coming in from the shore. And now we're pulling about 2,700 watts out of our batteries or about 200 amps out of the batteries. Pretty crazy. Now again, we have 1,236 amp hours. So how long could we do this for? Let's go into the battery and see. We could do this up, oh, it's counting down. Not very long, it's slowly going down. You have to wait until this number stops for us to be able to get a direct answer. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and just turn off the microwave real quick. And then this number should start going back up now. Yep, see it went back up a little bit. So we could run one air conditioner for about nine hours or so, it's still calculating. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty, it's pretty dead on now, nine, nine and a half. It's getting down to just doing minutes. So nine hours of one air conditioner with a current draw. So pretty cool that even on a 20 amp circuit, we can still run two air conditioners. Now if I come down here and turn off this air conditioner, as soon as the air conditioner kicks off, it will go from assisting and it'll go back into charging the batteries. So let's just watch it happen here. Okay, air conditioner just turned off and there we go, already a backing up absorption. So you can see now it's running the air conditioner still just the one because we still have one air conditioner on, but it's charging the batteries back up. So the reason I bring this up is it's pretty cool. Let's just say that you had a, a 30 amp coach or, and this is a 50, but let's just say you had a 30 amp coach and you're only plugged into like a 20 amp circuit like that. You can only run one large appliance at a time, like one air conditioner. So we have one air conditioner going, but we wanted to come in here into the kitchen and we wanted to use an instant pot or we want to use uh, you know, a induction cooktop, or we want to use a convection microwave or a microwave, then we can run that item for quite a while off the battery bank. You can see it's going to power that second air conditioner for like nine hours and we have no solar coming in. So solar coming in would offset that. So pretty, pretty handy. So when you have a small, that's a cool thing about the Victron hybrid inverters is they'll boost from the shore power, which is why I really love the Victron components. So, but yeah, they have one air conditioner, they can go in there and blow dry their hair and not have to worry about managing their power because the inverter will just instantly do it for them, which is pretty cool. The only thing they have to worry about is if they're going to run a lot of appliances when they have no shore power whatsoever. So let's say we unplug that shore power out there. But instead of running the three large appliances like we were earlier, when we were running two air conditioners and the microwave, they would just run one air conditioner and a microwave or the microwave and a coffee pot, the microwave and an instant pot, induction cooktop, hair dryer you know, those kind of large items that pull 13 to 1500 Watts. So that's why I say like one large item really per inverter, unless you have some shore power coming in. So hopefully you all think this is a pretty cool setup. Our thing is working perfectly. We got the air conditioner going. So the customer, when they get here to be a little bit cooler, let's get it down nice and cold in here. 
And I think that pretty much wraps up this RV. If you're interested in us doing a RV solar installation for you, don't forget to jump over to our website. It is great outdoors solar with an S that's great outdoors solar. Com. We have flat rate pricing. So this customer went with our 50 amp towable package and then they added two extra batteries. They added two extra solar panels and they added a second inverter. So they basically added on to our package that we already have. And not only do we those, do those packages, which is we have a 600 watt package, a thousand watt package and a 2000 watt package, which is basically one person, two people or four people in an RV. Um, basically is how I have it set up. But we do variations of those and we do custom systems as well. So if you have something weird or you just want like just batteries or you want us just to replace your existing solar panel that has died and you want a new one, we do stuff like that as well. Um, look forward to talking with y'all. Hope we can take care of your system for you. Adam is a killer technician. He does such a great job on these installs. So hopefully y'all enjoy seeing his nice work. And if you do, leave a little note down at the bottom to say like, killer job, Adam. Your wiring looks so good. You know, he'll love to hear from you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.